Hi, this is Swarm Week. My name is Jerome, I'm a developer and a sysadmin, which means that I often get to work on application development, deployment, and operations. I try to embrace DevOps principles as much as possible, and today I want to talk about two tools of the Docker open source ecosystem that are particularly helpful in that endeavor, Compose and Swarm. I want to show you how they can work together so that you can develop an application on your local machine and then deploy and scale it on a cluster. Let's start with a quick reminder about Compose. It is an amazing tool initially designed for developers. Compose lets us define our applications as stacks of containers interconnected together. You know how some files tell you a lot about a code repository? When there is a make file, you generally can build with make and install with make install. When there is a Vagrant file, you expect to be able to do Vagrant up. When there is a file named package.json or requirements.txt, it's usually a sign that you can use respectively npm or pip to install the code and its dependencies. Well, when you notice a repository with a file named docker-compose.yaml, this means Compose knows how to build and run this application. All you have to do is docker-compose up and magic will happen. You don't have to know exactly how the application is built, which languages and frameworks it uses, if it has dependencies on exotic data stores. As long as you have a regular Docker installation, for instance, through the Docker toolbox, Compose will take care of everything reliably, abstracting the details of your local setup. This is the code for my demo application. Since I see a Docker Compose ML file, I run Docker Compose up and Compose pulls the Redis image, then it pulls the Ruby image. Those images are defined directly or indirectly in the ComposeML file. In this file, I see five sections corresponding to five services, RNG, Hasher, WebUI, Redis, Worker. The Redis service is directly using the Redis image from the Docker Hub, but the Hasher service is defining a build directory. In this build directory, I will see a Docker file and that's the Docker file that Compose is building right now. That Docker file is based on the Ruby image, which is why I was pulling the Ruby image earlier. Now, Compose is moving to the next image, which is the RNG service. And the RNG service is using Python, then it's using pip to install Flask. And so once it's done building that, it's moving to the next service, which is Worker, also based on Python. And then last but not least is Web UI based on Node. And once this is built, the application is started and all the containers are connected together. And the logs that you are seeing uh, are the logs of the application as it's running. Since the application has a Web UI, let's see what it looks like. Our demo app is a Docker coins miner. Unlike Bitcoin, Docker coin is not a real cryptocurrency. You will never be able to buy pizza or coffee with Docker coins. In the web UI above, we can see that we are doing up to four hashes per second. Our Docker coins miner is built around the microservices architecture. The core component is a background worker. Let's have a quick look at the code of this worker. It's in Python, but if that's not your favorite language, don't worry, it's pretty simple. I would even say simplistic. All the important stuff fits on this single page. That background worker executes an infinite loop here, and during each iteration of the loop, it makes one request to the RNG service and one request to the hasher service. Then, every second, it updates a Redis store with its progress. The web UI is also connected to the Redis store, which is how we can see that graph here. There is one more thing that I would like to highlight in the code. Look at the top. When the worker connects to the other services, it is using their plain names. The code connects to Redis, RNG, Hasher, not redis.awesomestartup.io or 192.168.1.5. Docker automatically resolves those names to the IP addresses of the corresponding containers. This is great because it makes our code simpler and more readable. This will also be essential in the next phase when we will want to scale our application. Precisely, how do we scale? The application is currently running on a single node, our local Docker installation. We want performance and high availability. We would like to deploy on a cluster of multiple nodes so that we can use the compute resources of multiple machines. Moreover, an outage of a single node should not take the whole application down. Finally, we want to continue to use the same tools and the same workflow as much as possible. One option is to use the Docker API to control a bunch of Docker engines. 
We can even do that very easily by invoking the Docker CLI from a simple shell script. All we have to do is to set the Docker host environment variable. If our nodes are managed by a Docker machine, this can also be done with the command Docker machine env, which sets the appropriate environment variables. This method, however, has multiple drawbacks. First, we have to decide which machines should run which containers. Each time we add a container, we have to manually pick the machine to run it. Each time we add or remove a machine, we have to manually remap existing containers. But most importantly, if we do that, we have to change how we work. Each time we want to do something with a container, checking its status, looking at its resource usage, inspecting its logs, etc., we have to find out where the container is running. And if we want to list all our containers, the equivalent of Docker PS, we have to query each machine one by one and aggregate the results. Guess what? That's exactly the job of Docker Swarm. Swarm acts as a resource scheduler and orchestrator between us and our cluster. Another way to think about this is to consider Swarm as a load balancer for the Docker API sitting between us and our cluster. We talk to Swarm using the standard Docker API and Swarm talks to the cluster using the same API. That way we don't need to change anything to our existing tools nor to the existing Docker engines. If you manage your cluster with Docker Machine, you can automate the deployment and configuration of Swarm. Communication is then secured by TLS, which provides encryption as well as authentication with server and client certificates. Talking to Swarm is done exactly like talking to another Docker host, by setting the Docker host environment variable or by letting Docker Machine setting it for us with the Docker Machine env command. Once this is done, Docker PS will show us the list of all containers currently running on the whole cluster. And when we start a container with docker run, Swarm automatically picks a node to execute the container. The selection is made by a resource scheduling algorithm respecting placement and usage constraints. For instance, when running a web frontend and it's supporting memcached service, we can ask Swarm to collocate them together. Conversely, when running multiple instances of a redundant service, we can ask Swarm to make sure that they are placed on different machines or even different racks or geographic regions. Compose integrates with Swarm so we can scale our applications easily without having to learn about a new tool or API. This is my original application. Running it on Swarm doesn't require any modification, either in its code or in its Compose file. However, to scale this application, I need load balancers, specifically for the RNG and Hasher services. This is what I want to achieve after adding the load balancers. I decided to be fancy and put each web service on its own internal network, the blue and green rectangles on the right. Adding load balancers doesn't require changing my code. It is done entirely in the Compose file. On the left, you can see the original Compose file. On the right, the new Compose file. Let's review the important changes one by one. First, instead of building my application on the whole cluster, I'm referencing an image stored in a local registry. The tag that you see behind each image name is a timestamp to uniquely identify a given revision of my code. I could also have used a git hash, tag, or branch name. Next, I created the two networks, RNG and Hasher, to put those services in their own network. Finally, I added the load balancers, RNG LB and Hasher LB. I used network aliasing so that the network name RNG now resolves to the RNG LB container. That way, when the worker tries to connect to RNG, it actually terminates to the RNG LB load balancer. I have added labels to RNG and Hasher. Those labels will be used by a tiny script to update the load balancer configuration when we scale the application. And of course, since I'm both a huge fan of automation and a very lazy person, I wrote a script to make those changes for me. You give a service name to this script and it will load your compose file, create the network and the load balancer, set the correct labels and network aliases, and save the new compose file. Our application is ready to be deployed and scaled on Swarm. Let's try it on a cluster with five nodes. We'll use the same compose command as before, docker compose up. Compose creates the networks that I have defined in the compose file as well as a default network for my application. All my containers are now up and running, including the newly added load balancers. Note that since we are using images from a registry, we didn't get to see the build process. Let's see how our app is doing. 
To locate the HTTP server running in my WebUI service, I'll type docker compose port WebUI 80. I just have to paste the resulting address and port into my browser, and the performance graph loads up. Great, everything's running fine, but I'm still doing 3-4 hashes per second. We need more hashes per second. The easiest way to increase our application speed is to add more workers. By running docker compose scale worker equal 10, we tell Compose to bring up nine more identical copies of the worker service. Those copies will be dispatched by Swarm across the cluster. I now have 10 times more workers, so my mining speed should jump to 30 or 40 hashes per second, right? Wrong. It looks like we are peaking at 10 hashes per second. We could add 100 more workers, it wouldn't change anything because the bottleneck of the application is now within the hasher and RNG services. One of them is currently overloaded and can't deal with more requests. To solve that, we could just scale both RNG and hasher to five instances using the same docker compose scale command. That should take care of the problem. Let's try it and see what happens. Well, Apparently, not much happened, because while we now have five instances of RNG and hasher, only the first one is handling the load. To fix that, we need to update the configuration of our load balancers. This is automated by a tiny script. The script will gather all the containers that depend on the load balancer using the labels that we added earlier to the compose file. Then it will dynamically reconfigure the load balancers. We run it, and a few seconds later, boom, our performance graph jumps up, because all backends are now serving requests. I'm seeing the 30, 40 hashes per second that I was expecting. That's great. Now, since I'm running Swarm, it means that I can use the Docker API and CLI to manage my cluster. For instance, Docker PS shows me all the containers currently running across all nodes. These are the four extra hasher and RNG containers that we just started. Just below are the nine workers. You can see that Swarm, by default, has spread the load across all the nodes of my cluster. What about metrics? I will not show you fancy graphs because I'm more a CLI kind of person. So instead, I will use the docker stats built-in command of the docker CLI. This command below works identically on a single engine or on a Swarm cluster. It shows the live resource usage of all my containers on the cluster. CPU, memory, I.O., everything is here. Of course, I won't blame you if you prefer to deploy something like Prometheus or Snap to get actual graphs instead. I can even use the standard docker info command, but instead of showing me detailed information about the docker engine, it shows me an overview of my cluster. All my nodes are visible here, with some generic status about them. Alright, my application is running on a swarm cluster of five nodes. But what happens if one of them crashes unexpectedly? Let's find out. I'm going to SSH to node 3 and shut it down. During the first few seconds, it looks like everything is fine. But suddenly, the graph goes to zero. Note that the app is not totally dead since the graph is still updating. Let's find out what's going on by looking at the logs of the worker service. After a bunch of ordinary, just doing my job, carry on lines, we see a few pages of Python exceptions and tracebacks. But then, look, just a moment later, the normal log lines saying x units of work done, updating hash counter, are flowing again. It looks like it was just a transient hiccup. And this is confirmed by the web UI. The mining speed is coming back to 20-30 hashes per second. This is significantly lower than before since we lost a node, but at least my application is still up and running. What happened here? It's quite simple. The worker service is constantly making requests to hasher and RNG. When I crashed node 3, it affected at least one hasher or RNG container. It took a few seconds to the hasher or RNG load balancers to realize what was going on and stop sending requests to that dead container. But those few seconds were enough for every single instance of worker to send at least one request to that dead container. If you look at the code for the worker service, you will see that it is very simple, not fancy at all. If there is an error, it crashes and retries 10 seconds later. That's why we have this gap in the graph. This was just a quick overview of Swarm and its integration with Compose. We all agree that throwing tables of code over the wall Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. before leaving the office is bad. It must stop. 
But if instead of tables of code we throw container images, we only solved half of the problem and our ops team is still going to have a really bad weekend to deploy our application. Swarm and Compose address this challenge by enabling a single language, or rather a single file format, to define both development and production stacks. This finally gives a common language to developers and operations teams. If you want to try this out and get your hands dirty, you can deploy your own Swarm cluster in a few minutes with Docker Machine. That's what I did to provision the cluster that I used here. I used console as the key value store and also deployed a local registry. If you want to know more about my deployment process, I invite you to check this public GitHub repository. It has all the scripts that I used as well as the code for the DockerCons demo application. Finally, to learn more about Swarm, check docs.docker.com/swarm. Thank you.